Welcome. My name is Merle Whitney. And for our mobile app session today, we're going to be looking at formatting text in the XDK editor and also the HTML editor. We're going to start by clicking on Start with a Blank Project to the left of the screen. Then we're going to click in the Name Your Project box and we're going to type a name for the project. We'll call the project My Project. Next, you want to click Create to the bottom right. You will see a screen that says, Congratulations, you created a project. I want you to click no thanks on this screen. You are now presented with the developer screen and this is where you're actually going to enter your code. I want you to pay attention to tags on this page. Here we have the beginning body tag and HTML5 usually comes with a beginning body tag and an ending body tag. The ending body tag is a bit different from the beginning because you can see it has a slash after the less than sign. There's also an HTML tag at the very top as you can see here. And there's also an ending HTML tag at the bottom. You're going to be placing your HTML5 code between the two body tags. The beginning body tag right here and the ending body tag. In the screen above, you're also going to be placing JavaScript tags in the script tag and here you have a beginning script tag and you have an ending script tag. You're also going to be placing your CSS in the style tag. Here we have a beginning style tag and we also have an ending style tag. Let us start by taking the cursor between the body tag and we're just going to erase and we're going to type a name and address. So we're going to type John Edwards, press enter, we're going to type an address for him, we're going to type Number four, Ellerton Lane, Bridgetown. So we have some code and the code is between the beginning body type. Scroll the screen down a little so you can see begin the B. The beginning body tag and the ending body tag. Now we are in the develop, you can see the develop tag here, we are in the develop mode. We want to click on emulate. Emulate gives you the option to see how your text will appear on your device. To the left hand side, you can see you have the Apple iPhone 4S, there's also the Apple 5. You can also switch from portrait to landscape, back to portrait. You can also view the Apple iPad. And there are many other fonts here that you can design for. We're going to go to the Apple 5. And as you see, each phone has different dimensions for the screen output. For example, for the Apple 5, we have 640 by 1136 
and the upper 4s. For the screen, we have 640 by 960. So to see what you're typing and how it would look on the phone, you can go to the Emulate tab. We're going to go back to the Develop tab. And as you saw just now, John Edwards, every line of the address came on the same line. That is because HTML5 does not recognize the Enter key. We need to put a break after each line so that we can have a line after each line of the address. So a break tag would be less than sign, BR, greater than sign. And we can do the same for the Elliton lane. And let's just copy and paste. Control C to copy. Take your cursor after the E in lane. Control V to paste. And you can do the same thing with bridge down. Now let's click on emulate and see what difference it makes. And you always ask to save your data. So you always say yes. And as you can see, the lines of the address now come in the order that you want them to appear. Now, we're going to switch to the HTML screen because for this session, we want to concentrate on formatting text. Our HTML editor that we're using is an editor that will allow us to enter HTML code or JavaScript code just like the XDK. For this course, we're going to be working between the two screens. So since we're doing HTML5, we're just going to put a 5 after HTML, put the greater than sign, and we can remove the rest of this code. Please note that you have, again, a beginning HTML tag and an ending HTML tag. You have a beginning head tag and you have an ending head tag. Between the head tags, you have a title tag, beginning title tag and ending title tag. The title is usually the title that will appear on a page. For example, if we were doing a page about Beaches of Barbados, for that page title, we would remove on title and we would type Beaches. So that Beaches will appear at the top left of the page that you go on. Now, we're going to take our cursor between the body tag. And we're actually going to get some data from our mobile app folder, which is on the desktop. And we're going to paste the data between the body tag so that we can look at different ways of formatting this data. So I'm going to minimize the program. Go to the desktop, click on my mobile app folder, and I'm going to open the file called Barbados Beaches. The information that I want from this file is the West Coast information. So I am just going to highlight the West Coast information. And I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to go back to my um, editor and I'm going to paste it between the body tag. Here my cursor is between the body tag. I'm going to control V and paste. Now, before we do any formatting at all on this page, let's look and see what the page looks like in our browser. So I'm going to click right here on View External Browser. And we see the page with no formatting whatsoever. So there are things that we want to do with this page. So let's just close the tab. 
and come back to our editor screen. Now notice that we have here edit, browse and design. Where you want to be to make changes is in this edit screen. And the first change that we're going to make is with the heading West Coast. We're going to center West Coast horizontally across the page. So we're going to highlight West Coast and we're actually going to click on the align center tab that you see on the menu above. Please note the settings that came before and after West Coast. We have the code div align equals center for the beginning tag and for the ending tag we have slash div. Now let's browse externally and see how that looks. That's right. West Coast is now centered across the screen. We're going to close that browser page again and get back to our edit page. We want to do some more things with the text. First of all, we want to correct these two words in the very beginning line. And we want to say beaches are calm and relaxing. So we go C A L M and we want to put relaxing. So I N G. Those two corrections. With those two corrections out of the way, we want to make a paragraph. The paragraph that we want to make, we will put from beaches to drinks. Now we can do that two ways. The paragraph tag is a P tag. We can actually type the beginning paragraph tag before the B, which is a less than sign, P, and a greater than sign. Now we can go to drinks, and we can type the ending paragraph tag, which is a less than sign, slash, P, and greater than sign. And that gives us a paragraph. Now, we want to make some side headings for the Mullins Beach, the Paints Beach, and the other beaches. So, we're going to have to put a break after Mullins Beach. So let's take out the colon, remove the colon, and you can press enter so you can see what you're doing. Remember that HTML doesn't understand the enter, so you're just pressing the enter so that you will have space to see what you're doing. So we're going to put a break after Mullen Speech. Instead of typing the BR, we can go to the menu above and we can click on break. We also want to underline Mullins Beach and make it bold. So for underline, we're going to highlight Mullins Beach. And we're going to hold down the control and press U. And that gives us an underline. Please note the underline code. The beginning U tag and the ending U tag. We also want to bold Mullins Beach. So we could type a B tag before Mullins and another B tag that will end the first B tag after Beach. Or we can simply highlight Mullins Beach and we can click on the B tag. So we want to click on fonts and there you have the B and B stands for bold you want to click on bold. Now let's uh, look at what we did by clicking on the external browser. So we have West Coast centered, we have the first paragraph, then we have Mullins Beach with a break after uh, Mullins Beach. So let's close 
and we want to have a paragraph, another paragraph, from this is a very popular beach to visit. So what we can do here is we can shade or highlight the whole paragraph instead of typing a B at the beginning tag for the beginning tag and another ending tag at the end by visit we can click on common on the menu and then we can look for the paragraph tag which you see here where my cursor is and you can click when you do that which is a shortcut really you see that the beginning p tag comes in and the ending p tag comes in so we're going to continue doing the same thing we did before with the paint stay beach we're going to take out the colon then we are going to shade paints bay or highlight paints bay we're going to control u to underline it and to make it bold we click on fonts and click on b please pay careful attention to the codes that we use because you will need to remember the code don't forget that we need to have a break after Payne's Bay. So we come after that last code, put the cursor after the last code, and you click on Common and click on BR that stands for Break. Now I'm going to press Enter and push this paragraph down. And remember, I'm just doing that so that we can actually see what we're doing because the enter does not show up for html so i am going to shade again or highlight this paragraph and i am going to make it a paragraph by putting a p tag on it so i'm going to click on common look for the p tag looks like a music note and click on paragraph Let's see what we have so far. Let's browse externally. There we have Miami Beach, Paints Bay. So we're going to close the external browser and get back so we can do some more formatting. We're going to do Fitz Village the very same way we did the other. Backspace. Highlight Fitz Village. Okay, there we go. We control U to underline and then we click on font and B to bold. Again, we have to put the BR after Fitz Village. So you want to click on common and click BR or remember that you can simply type BR. We're going to press enter to bring parking down. And we're going to put that line by itself, since that is the paragraph for Fitz Village. We're going to put that as a paragraph. So we click on P for the paragraph. And we're going to do whole town. Remove the colon from whole town. Highlight whole town. Control U to underline. Click on font and B to make it bold. And we want to put the break. Again, click on common. Click on break. And enter to come down so we can actually see what we're doing. And we're going to make the last paragraph into a paragraph by clicking on the paragraph tag. Now we're going to remove the spikes down text because we don't want to use the spikes down text right now. So we're just going to highlight it and press delete to delete the spikes down tag. Let's browse and see what we have. There you go. West Coast, you have the site headings, you have them on the line, you have them in bold. We want to go back to the heading. I want to change 
the color of the heading and make the heading a little bigger. Now for this session, we're going to be looking at the formats within the HTML page. There are many different types of formats that we're going to be learning. We're going to be learning CSS, standing for Cascading Style Sheets. We're going to be doing inline CSS. We're going to be doing external CSS. Now, I am going to click on font so that we can see the F plus here and the F minus. And this is just another way of changing size. I am going to highlight West Coast. And then I'm going to click on F plus on the menu for font size. Now if I were to view externally, you would see that one doesn't really make a difference from the rest of the text. So I'm going to change that one. You see you here have plus one. I'm going to take the one out. I'm going to put two. And then I am going to look at the size that I get. So view with external browser, and there you go. It's a little bigger. You want to try three. So we take the two out and try three. Let's browse and see what we get with the three. Bigger still. Let's try the four. And that's even bigger. Let's bring it back down to three for our purposes. Now the F minus will do the opposite of the F plus. It will bring the size of the text down. For this text, we also want to change the color of the text. So we're going to click and highlight West Coast. Now I am going to click on the font menu where you see that triple A, a red A, and a blue A. I'm going to click on that. And here on the tag editor font screen, I can see color on a sign. I'm going to click on the down arrow and I'm going to choose blue and then I'm going to click apply. And let's browse to see what we get. Browsing externally, and there you go, your text is blue. Closing the browser. Now, when we looked at the text, let's go back and look a second time at the different colors. The colors here are limited, as you can see. There are not very many colors. Just cancel that box. We can, instead of putting our color from that menu, we can go to what we call the palette. So I'm going to leave the tags. Notice the tag. The tag for the color here is font color equal blue. And the ending tag is font. Notice that the beginning tag for the size is font size equal plus three. And then there's also an ending font for that one. When we start to format with CSS, you will see that the font style will look a little bit different from what we're seeing here in this HTML page, but we will get to that. Right now we were talking about the color blue. And I'm saying we don't want to use that color blue, or as a matter of fact, we don't want to use any of the other colors that we saw there. So I am simply going to backspace and delete the word blue. And then I'm going to take my cursor and I'm going to go to the palette up to the left hand side of the menu and I'm going to click on palette. When I click on palette you're going to see a range of colors and for each color that my mouse goes over you can see that there is a change in the color number. The color is in hexadecimal format. So let's say that I wanted, 
Let's see. This color. Maybe that's a brown color, an orange. And if you see, the number of the color jumps in. Let us view externally to see how that looks. Okay, so that just is another way that you can change the color. You can also come right in the space between the quotation mark and you could type your own color. You could type purple. P-U-R-P-L-E. And browse. And there you have the purple color. We want to make another change here. For the site headings of the beach, we want to put all the site headings in italics. So we're going to do it the very same way we did the bold. And just how you would do it maybe in Microsoft Word or another word processing program. You're going to highlight Mullins Beach. And you're going to click on the I for italic. Notice the code. Beginning I and ending I tag. We're going to do the same thing with Payne's Bay. I'm going to make it italic. And I. And we're going to do the same thing with Fitz Village. Then we're going to go back. I'm going to take a look to see what it looks like. So let's view again. There you go. So we did not do whole town. As you can see, whole town looks a bit different. So let's close the browser again. We're going to scroll on the screen. And we are also going to put whole town in italics by highlighting it and clicking on the I for italics. And we're going to browse another time just to see how it will look on the web page. Now, if you notice, the web page margins are very small. And we could make that change. Close features again. In your mobile app, I don't think that it's necessary to make a very big margin because you're using a mobile device. But we're going to show you how you can do the margin anyway. And we're going to do the margin in what we call uh, pixels. So I have to do both a left margin and a right margin. So what I do is I took the cursor right before the greater than sign in the beginning body tag. And when I did that, I'm going to see a drop down box. I'm going to scroll down for the drop down box and I'm going to look for a left margin. Double click on left margin. And as you can see, my cursor is blinking, waiting for me to type a left margin. Now I'm going to type 150. And that 150 class is what we call pixels, the resolution of the screen. I also want the right margin. So I'm going to go right before the greater than sign, press the space bar. And I can either search for right margin or I can actually type right margin. R-I-G-H-T. Look, and when I start to type it, it actually comes up. So you click, double click, and you want to put 150 for that right margin. Now let's browse and see what difference it makes. There. A much bigger margin. But you remember, you're not going to be needing those big margins for your mobile app because the mobile app screen is not as big or wide as a computer screen. So you want to hold as much information as you can horizontally on the page. What we want now to look at is to see how we can put a background color to the page. So we're taking the cursor right before the greater than sign within the body tag again and we're going to press the space bar. And what we're looking for is not background, we're looking for BG color. 
because background is actually a background picture but BG color will actually give you a solid color for your page so if I click on BG color double click I can actually type a color I can go to the palette and get a color always remember that if you're going to put a color as a background on your page the color should be a very pale color so that you can actually see your text on the page so we want to look for a very pale color nothing that will hide the black and let's see yellow let's see how that looks remember you can always change to suit what you want that's very bright it might hurt some people's eyes so you need to probably choose a milder color remember you can choose any color you want if you did not want a solid color you wanted to have a background instead of BG color you would actually put, put background equal and then you would want to put the path where that background picture lies for example you might have the background picture saved within your home site folder you might have it saved on your desktop or on your computer you actually have to put the part to where it exists let's take another look at what we did today we looked at how we can do some formats within the editor itself now I'm going to close the browser again and what I'm going to do is I am going to take this information that we did because remember we said that we are working between two screens so I'm going to take the information between the body tags I'm going to take it over to the XDK I am not going to take over the left margin or right margin or the background color because we can change that within the XDK so I'm going to highlight the information And I don't want to carry over the ending body tag because we already have an ending body tag in the XDK. So I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to right click and copy. And then I'm going to go to my XDK. Find it here. I'm going to go to the develop tag because that's where the code is. I'm going to remove what we had before which was this address, delete that, and I'm going to paste what we're bringing over. So I'm going to Control and V. Now remember that in order to see your file, and this file has a default name of index.html, see it here to the left, that file is the main file for your mobile app. Then we are going to click emulate. And you, it's always going to ask you to save and you will say yes if you want your data saved. And there you can see the information that we did is now in your mobile app. And remember you can change the phone to a different phone or you can change it to iPad or you can change from portrait to landscape so for this course you're going to be working between the XDK and the HTML editor the same way how we put code in the editor we could have typed that code within the XDK right here in the develop screen but it's easier and clearer for us to type and make corrections and then bring it over to the XDK and emulate that's it for our session today class thank you